read some stories from the book The Telltale Lilac Bush by Ruth Ann Music. She uh, had classes on folklore and would get her students to uh, write stories about their local uh, hauntings and other such phenomena that they'd heard about from their communities and stuff which was normally from all over Fairmont and different places uh, in West Virginia and even outside because they're not all Christmas stories. There are a few. So uh, let me start with the first one. This one's called The Phantom Soldier. During World War I, a young soldier from West Virginia was engaged to be married to a beautiful young girl but was called into the army sooner than he had expected. He was sent to Germany. After he had gone, his older brother persuaded the girl that the soldier had not loved her after all and married her himself. On Christmas Eve, the soldier returned unexpectedly. A full moon lighted the sky, but the house on the hill, surrounded by pines where his brother lived, seemed dark. The soldier knocked, and his older brother let him in, though he was obviously not pleased to see him. The wife was upstairs. The two brothers talked for a few minutes. The older brother admitted that he had married the girl for her money and position, and added that if the other had interfered, he would not hesitate to kill him. The soldier left but returned in a short while with a revolver and shot his older brother. He then left the house as quietly as he had come. The young wife, hearing the shot, rushed downstairs to find her husband dying on the floor. He told her what had happened, so the police, after she called them, made a thorough search. They could find no evidence of the soldier. On Christmas Day, a telegram arrived addressed to her husband. It announced that his brother had been killed in action on December 21st. All right, this next folk tale doesn't quite deal with Christmas, but it involved a child and a toy, so I thought I'd include it. It's called The Little Rag Doll. Dusk was beginning to fall over the little country community. A tired school teacher was grading papers and looking over some of the work for the following day. It had been a beautiful day, and although her school board and also her landlady had asked her not to stay after school hours, she could not resist the urge to stay and work a little longer. After all, they would not explain their strange request, so she thought nothing was really meant by it. Suddenly, she felt something cold, like a chill passing over her from head to toe. She felt an unknown fear, and something told her to look at the back of the dreary schoolroom. Her startled eyes saw a little ragged girl sitting in the third row, last seat back. She had her hand raised and was looking pitiful at the teacher. Please show me my lesson in my primer. And teacher, she said in a broken voice, I can't find my little rag doll. The teacher went back to the child and was astonished to see an old-fashioned primer, which had been used many years before. She was so amazed that she just stood there staring at the little girl, and the child vanished from that room. The teacher told her landlady about it later that evening. The landlady told her that this ghost had haunted the school for many years and that the school board could not find a teacher who would remain any length of time after seeing the little girl. They were in desperate need of a teacher, so they had asked her not to stay after school hours, hoping she would never see the ghost. The teacher made a rag doll that night and decided about what assignment she would make if the little girl appeared again. The next evening, she intentionally remained after school hours. The little girl did appear and made the same request again. 
The teacher assigned the lesson and gave the child the little rag doll. The little girl then vanished as before. The teacher and the landlady went for a walk that evening and finally came to a swamp. Many years ago, the landlady said, a little girl had been murdered there. She was on her way home from school, and dusk was falling as she passed through the swamp. Her friends and relatives had never been able to find the little rag doll or the murderer. When they arrived at the child's grave, they were both amazed to find, lying on the grave, the little rag doll the teacher had made the night before for the little ghost girl. The little girl never visited the school after that, and evidently her spirit is now at rest. The next one's called Help. Many years ago, Dr. Anderson was awakened by a persistent knocking at his front door. Accustomed to getting calls at all hours, he dressed quickly and hurried downstairs. The red glow from the hearth casts flickering shadows throughout the room. Glancing at the large wall clock, he noticed it was just past midnight. Outside, the moon shone brightly on the white snow. He opened the door and was surprised to see a young girl, 12 or 13, standing before him. He had never seen her before. She was dressed in a blue coat, carried a white muff, and her cheeks were ruddy from the cold. Please come to my mother, begged the girl. She's sick, and I'm afraid she'll die. Who is your mother, asked the doctor. Mrs. Ballard, replied the girl. Please hurry. Then the girl explained that they had only recently moved to the old Hostetler place, about three miles away. She said she thought her mother had pneumonia, and since her father was dead, there was no one else to come for help. When the doctor said that he would come at once and do all he can do, the girl darted away, running up the road in the direction of the old Hostetler place. Dr. Anderson bundled up in his sheepskin coat, pulled down the ear flaps of his cap, picked up his bag, and went to the barn for his horse. He lost no time in throwing on the bridle and saddle, picking up a blanket because it was blue cold, and heading for the Hostetler place, for in those days pneumonia was a dreaded illness. As he hurried his horse up the cold, snow-covered road, he kept thinking of the bravery of the young girl who had faced the severe cold to seek his help. She had run off before he could ask her to warm herself, yet she hadn't appeared to be cold. His thoughts soon turned toward his own discomfort because his hands and feet began to feel numb before he saw the glow of a lamp at the old Hostetler house. Quickly tying his horse at the gatepost, he threw the blanket over it and hurried up the snow-covered walk to the porch. There was no answer at his knock, so he opened the door and walked in. The sight was a common one to him. There in a bed lay the sick woman. The fire was almost out, but the oil lamp still burned. He felt the woman's pulse and found that she had a very high fever. He placed more wood on the fire because the room was cold, then set to work with confidence that comes from having handled so many emergencies. He knew if he could break the fever, he could possibly save the woman's life. After giving her medicine, he heated water and applied poultices to her chest. She soon rallied enough to ask, How did you know to come? The doctor replied that her daughter had come for him, and that she was a brave girl to go out on such a bitter night. Why, a young girl, twelve or thirteen years old, called me out of bed and begged me to hurry here. It couldn't have been my daughter. She died from pneumonia three years ago. Who could it have been then, asked the doctor, and how does she know you were ill? She dressed in a blue coat and white muff. My daughter had a blue coat and white muff, whispered the woman. They're hanging in the closet over there. Dr. Anderson strode over to the closet, opened the door, and took out a blue coat and white muff. His hands trembled when he felt the coat and muff and found them still warm 
and damp from perspiration. Ha 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 ha!